So I get lots of comments on my videos saying, that's not keto, that's Atkins. Hey folks, my name's Allie, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about the differences between keto and Atkins. So actually over the past couple months, I've been going to my local um, secondhand bookstore, as you can see, like a little sticker there, um, and just trying to get all the Atkins resources I could for cheap. Um, and so I just, I wanted to read through them and try and discuss the differences between the ketogenic diet and the Atkins diet. So in this video, we're going to define both diets. So let's start with the ketogenic diet because that's the one I know most about because that's the one that I lost 170 pounds on over the course of about two years. I'm in my third and a half year now. Um, I'm sitting around 150 and things are going pretty good. So what is a ketogenic diet? It is basically a diet where you eat so few carbohydrates per day that your body is forced to run on fat. So this means that to be in a state of ketosis, you need to limit your carb intake to about 20 to 25 grams of net carbs. That way your body is forced to run on your fat for fuel rather than on sugar. Now we call it a high fat, low carb diet with moderate protein. Um, but I always follow just a few simple rules. Like I said, keep your uh, carbohydrates, your daily intake to about 20 net grams per day. And then also make sure you hit your protein goal. That's going to be different for everybody based on your body size. For me, I try and aim between 80 and 100 grams of protein a day. If I go over, I'm not too worried about it. It's just more protein for my body. It's not gonna turn into sugar in your bloodstream, I promise. And then I always say fill in the rest with fat until you hit a calorie limit. So if you're trying to lose weight, you definitely need to know that, you know, what your calorie limit is so that you're not overeating on calories. Some people just say eat fat until you're full, but maybe you don't know what that full feeling is because like me, you have issues with food and overeating. So you've just always overeaten. So you might have to track your calories and all of your macronutrients as well. But again, the main thing to be in a state of ketosis is to eat 20 to 25 grams of net carbs per day. And that's keto. Now, like I said, I bought three books. One of them is a recipe book. One of them um, was written by Dr. Atkins. And then another one was written by somebody else. So um, I couldn't find like the original original, but all of these basically say the same stuff. So I'm sure that the original, um, the new Atkins revolution or whatever it's called, um, says the exact same stuff too. So let's start with Atkins for Life, written by Dr. Atkins. And he says that there are four stages um, in the Atkins way of eating or diet. So stage one of Atkins is the induction phase. This means that you are eating about 20 grams of net carbs per day. Um, sounds a lot like keto and the foods that he recommends eating are fish, poultry, eggs, beef, and other foods in high protein and good fats. You may also eat up to three cups of salad greens. So, you know, you're getting those vegetables, you're getting those meats, you're cutting out pretty much everything else. Then he says after two weeks in the induction phase, you can add in some nuts and seeds if they don't interfere with your weight loss. And again, people, you know, on keto say either nuts do affect them or they don't affect them. Right now, I'm kind of finding that they're affecting me just because I want to eat them. Not that they're like, they make me feel bloated or anything, or they make me retain water, um, but just like they're a craving food for me. So I'm trying to avoid them at the moment. Phase two of the Atkins plan is ongoing weight loss. And so he says here, you continue to eat what you've been eating in phase one, which was basically the keto diet, right? The 20 grams per day, and then the foods that we get to eat. But now he says, week by week in phase two, you add back nutrient rich carbohydrates and but these ones they're not like the traditional carbohydrates they are um, veggies cheese berries nuts and seeds and maybe even legumes and again people on keto eat legumes i eat like green beans sometimes and i eat peanuts so it's just going to depend on what you view as keto so you add those five grams of net carbs each week until your weight loss ceases then you go back and subtract five grams of carbs and you found like the maximum amount of carbs that you can eat while still losing weight then he says that phase three is pre-maintenance where your weight loss is going to slow so much so that you're not, you know, crash dieting. You're just kind of getting used to those eating habits um, so that they become ingrained in you, which, you know, I think just happens naturally. It took me forever to lose my last 15 or 20 pounds, you know, all the way from 320. Once I hit 170, it took a good six months. Yeah, about six months until I hit my 150 goal. But in phase three, you're also adding another 10 grams of carbs to your program each week. 
And then if your weight loss stops again, subtract those carbs, about five to 10 grams until you start losing weight again. And apparently this is your revised level of carb consumption. Now then the last phase, phase four is lifetime maintenance. Um, and it's just talking about, you know, learning now what you can and can't eat and the amounts and things. And, you know, you've kind of gotten rid of that sugar addiction a little bit. And so you're still skipping the junk food. You're not supposed to go out and eat cake and everything or milkshakes all the time or French fries. Um, but now, you know, that you learn how to use your carb limit on nutrient rich foods. Um, but he includes in those nutrient rich foods, like unrefined grains, like, you know, whole bread and things like that. Um, fruits and vegetables. Now, I haven't had a fruit in over three and a half years now. Um, some people eat berries on keto. Some people eat half a banana, you know, <laughs> it just depends on what your approach is. So to me, um, eating fruit, a lot of people on keto say that fruit is nature's candy. You know, it's just, it's sugar. It's still got lots of sugar. I love fruit. I love pineapple, mango, and watermelon. And every summer I crave those things, but they are binge foods for me. I could eat three whole watermelons if I wanted to. I could eat 10, you know, pineapples. So for me, they're just no-go foods. And in my opinion, they're not keto for me. But, you know, other people can have those small amounts and still eat them. So it just depends on how you approach keto. But the one thing I don't agree with is the grains. I mean, that's just something that we just avoid on keto. So I can't say that, you know, bread, like even whole grain bread, is keto. Now, some people do eat low carb breads. Again, I stay away from those because to me, it's just like I'm not on the keto lifestyle, but some people do fine with limiting, you know, those like um, low carb tortillas and things. So again, it's your choice on how you want to approach the lifestyle. So he says that in this stage four or phase four, most people find that they don't gain weight consuming between 45 and 100 grams of net carbs a day. Um, and then once you realize what your number is where you're not gaining or losing any weight, that is your Atkins carbohydrate equilibrium or ACE or ACE. And so it seems to me that the goal of Atkins is to figure out how many carbs you can eat per day without gaining or losing weight. So in the very first stage, it seems like they are using keto and the ketogenic lifestyle and, you know, the 20 grams of carbs per day and higher fat and higher protein and all that to get you to lose weight, right? That's what's causing the weight loss. But then once you hit stage four, you totally switch out of keto. You switch into eating about 100 grams of carbs per day, depending on how it works for you. Like you said, it's gonna be individual for everybody. But it's not about losing weight. It's about maintaining and being able to eat carbs. And so, you know, I always say for keto weight loss, calories are gonna matter. Even if you're just trying to maintain weight, calories matter. Um, so if you're overeating, even on keto, and you're trying to maintain, but you're eating 3,000 calories when you need 2,000, you will probably gain weight, right? So, you know, it's just, I always say that there's a difference between keto weight loss. You really gotta bring back those calories. Um, try not to focus on fat as a goal if you're not hungry, right? <laughs> and then keto maintenance, yeah, maybe focus on fat as a goal, but again, don't overeat if you're not hungry. So the main difference I'm seeing between keto and Atkins is that Atkins is trying to get you to where you can eat those carbs and not be in a state of ketosis. Whereas keto is all about being in a state of ketosis. So you keep those carbs low. You keep them to 20 to 25 net grams of carbs per day. And so, you know, at the beginning in the um, introduction of this book, he does say that, you know, you're trying to learn how to choose those foods that'll keep your blood sugar at a baseline throughout the day. And that's what we do in keto too, because we know that the insulin spike increases hunger and it reduces fat burning. So that's a very definitely keto way of looking at things. And in this book, they do say um, control carbs to burn fat. Uh, so this one seemed a little bit more ketogenic, um, especially with just talking about the overall Atkins diet. They included this nice little graphic about how high carb affects your blood sugar and fat loss and how low carb affects your blood sugar and fat loss. And so that's definitely keto. And like I said, phase one of Atkins and maybe even phase two, you know, if you can get up to 30, some people can eat up to 50 grams of carbs per day and still be in ketosis. So it's just going to depend on you as an individual. So stages one and two of Atkins seem pretty ketogenic, but those last stages where you're eating a lot of carbs and you're not necessarily in a state of ketosis, um, it's not ketogenic, right? 
And then what I do like about this book um, is that they talk about the importance of protein. And I always say you have to eat protein. Don't be afraid of protein on keto. As long as you're not eating, you know, t twice what you need, three times what you need, it's not going to affect you negatively. You definitely want to get a little bit more protein than less than you need. And protein is important because he says it keeps you warm, it helps with blood clotting, and it gives you healthy brain function, and it's satiating. And you folks, like, yes, I like a big slab of meat, and it's mostly protein. Yeah, sure, meat has some fat on it, but I like a big slab of meat, and it's usually protein. And it keeps you satiated and feeling pleasantly full. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we say keto's high fat, don't eat too much protein. Um, but, you know, I'd rather have a big chicken breast, you know, that's, 300 calories rather than three tablespoons of butter, right? <laughs> I'm going to feel more full eating that big chicken breast. It's got a little fat in it, whatever, not too much. But if I had three tablespoons of butter instead, I wouldn't hit my protein goal and I would feel, you know, I wouldn't get that volume feeling in my stomach. So yes, we do kind of have to balance eating the right amounts of protein with the right amount of fat. And it's just, you know, again, it's going to depend on how satiated you feel, what your needs are, if you prefer having that volume in your stomach rather than having more fat. Um, as long as you're hitting your protein goal, that's really going to be up to you. Now, they do say in no way is Atkins a high protein diet, um, and which I always thought it was a high protein diet, but apparently it's just adequate protein. Um, and then they do say dairy, dietary fat makes Atkins work. So um, they have like this little section on fat. And they say that the bottom line is there's no other way to get the calories or energy you need and to switch to a primarily fat metabolism without dietary fat. So they say, yes, eat the fat. It's not just about the protein and the low carbs. So it does sound somewhat ketogenic. But again, those last phases of this program want you to get to those higher carbs. And then it's not about being in ketosis because they use ketosis to help you lose weight. But then that maintaining weight. It's not about ketosis. It's not about limiting those carbs. It's about reintroducing them to your limit to where you don't gain weight. And then let's look at the cookbook that I got. They actually did have lots of good recipes in here. Like I dog-eared one for, it was veal scallopini, I think, and it looked really good. And <laughs> mother's pot roast. But here they have um, rye bread and zucchini bread. And some of the ingredients are, for example, unbleached flour and whole wheat flour. Again, it's gonna depend on what your view of keto is. I try and just avoid everything that's like a no-go, like flowers, you know, potatoes, fruits, and all that, right? But if you look, some people can incorporate those because the grams per serving for carbs is two. So if you can, you know, not binge on something like that when you make it, and you know, it's just, it depends. So you, maybe you can eat flour and remain in keto with like recipes like this, but for me, it's just too hard to resist. So I don't even try and make breads. I don't try and make muffins or anything like that. So the final verdict, what is the difference between keto and Atkins? Well, I think I've said it a few times, but I'm gonna state it again, just so you know. Keto is about being in a state of ketosis because you are limiting those carbs to 20 to 25 grams of net carbs per day. This forces your body to run on fat for fuel rather than sugar. And if you're looking to lose weight, that's great because it's gonna eat the fat off of you. Atkins, on the other hand, starts out for a weight loss program using ketosis as a way to lose weight. But once you get into those later stages three and four, it's more about maintaining weight while eating the most amount of carbs that you can. And so when people comment on my videos on what I eat in days, I just want to be like, it's keto. Even though it might look like the first stage of Atkins, the first stage of Atkins is basically keto. And like I said, everybody's going to approach keto differently. You know, some people might try and hit their fat goal if they want to. Some people might eat as little protein, you know, just their goal and then stop. Some people don't care if they go over their protein goal. Um, some people eat low carb breads and low carb muffins. Some people just, you know, know that they'll binge on that. So they just say no to things like that. It's just going to depend on what works for you. Well, folks, that's about it for today. I hope I was informative. I've been wanting to make this video for so long, but I just, I didn't want to have to thumb through these, but it was really educational and I'm glad that I did. I found some nice little recipes. Um, actually, all of these had recipes in them. Um, I think, you know, Dr. Atkins, I think he knew what he was talking about. Um, definitely, you know, there are people who do keto and then don't want to do it for the rest of their life. So maybe, you know, following phases three and four of Atkins could help them, you know, enjoy food more. 
um, you know, if they can increase those carb intakes without gaining weight. So I definitely think it's useful for people, but like I said, it's going to be different for everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video. That would help me out a lot and subscribe. That would also help out a lot. If you want to find me on Instagram, my name is keto underscore Allie. Also, I have a Pinterest and a blog and you can find me on Facebook as well. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.